Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a character illustration in Adobe Illustrator. So let's jump into it. To start with, I've created a new document, a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high. And I'm going to select the ellipse tool and left click and hold shift to draw a circle. Now let's just deselect that stroke and select the fill and from the swatches panel, we're just going to double click any swatch. Now it doesn't matter what one we pick at this stage, but we'll double click it and set this to global. Now the reason we want to set this as global is because it will easily allow us to change the entire color of our character later in the tutorial. So we have a red circle. This is the start of our character illustration. Now, of course, when you're coming up with the idea of an illustration, whether it's in your head or on paper, it's going to be a lot more complicated, but actually with a basic understanding of Illustrator and some of the more basic tools, you can actually bring that illustration to life in a digital vector format quite easily. So we've got a circle at the moment and next we're going to, well, we can either use the arc tool by left clicking and holding here where the line segment tool is, and we can left click and hold shift to draw an arc or we can use the pen tool. So we could left click, hold shift to make sure that line snaps to a 45 degree angle and then left click and drag out while still holding shift. And we have a curve. Now we've got those two curves. Let's just drag over those. Make sure we select the stroke here and we can select that same red global swatch and from the stroke panel on the right, increase the weight. So two different ways of creating curves. I think the one down here is a little bit better. That was using the arc tool. So let's just get rid of this one at the top. And we're just going to move this over here. So this is going to be one of the arms. And we can change the cap to round cap from the stroke panel. And it will just round off that corner there. And we can select this and just drag this over to the right, holding alt. And it will create a copy. And we can then use the rotate tool to just left click and rotate this round. And you can hold shift as well. So it snaps to set increments. So we've just rotated this 180 degrees and we can then go and position this here. So we've got the two arms and we can position it something like this. Now for the legs, we're going to use the line segment tool to draw a straight vertical line. But again, you can use the pen tool. So there's usually lots of different ways of accomplishing the same thing. It just depends on your personal preference. So let's left click and hold shift and we can very easily draw a vertical line. Now it wants to continue that line, but you can just press escape on the keyboard and select the main selection tool and it will cancel that. Now it's very kindly remembered the same color and the same rounded cap and stroke weight that we used before. So we can just move the leg into position. We can use the direct selection tool to select the bottom anchor point and we can hold shift and drag this down or up to make it longer or shorter as we need to. So we'll just make it a tad longer there. And again, I'm just going to select this, left click and hold alt drag this across. Now you can see I can move it up and down. If you hold shift as well as alt, it will keep it perfectly in line. So let's do that. Now I want to make sure that both of these legs are spaced equally apart or centrally to the circle, so the main body of the character. So we can drag over both of these and go to object group. So now these legs are grouped together and I can drag over, over both the legs and the main body here, the circle, and from the alignment options, either at the top or on the right hand side, I can select horizontal align center. And you'll see it just shift those in place. So the space here between the left leg and the edge is equal to the space between the right leg and the edge. And then I can then bring those arms in as well. I could do the same here with the arms. I could just select them holding shift, go to object and group. So now the arms, the same, they are grouped together and I can drag over everything and just make sure that everything is aligned centrally. So there we go, attention to detail. Right, I'm also going to, well, I'm going to ungroup these arms now because I don't need them grouped anymore. And I'm actually going to hold Alt and left click and drag this arm here. 
Now, if I rotate this by holding shift from one of the corners, I've got a smile. So we've actually got the mouth done as well using that same curve. And I'm going to pick a different color for this. So we'll just double click on the black swatch for now. Remember, it doesn't matter too much. The important thing is that you select global. And I'm going to just hold shift and scale this down. And just decrease the weight a little bit. Now we could do the same thing again, group the arms and center everything. But because I've got my smart guides turned on, if I drag the mouth here towards the center of the circle, you can see hopefully the pink guides line up and it snaps it right in the middle. So those smart guides are very, very helpful. And I'm just going to move this down. And now I'm actually going to use the ellipse tool, left click and hold shift. And we'll just swap that fill and the stroke. So we have a black fill for the eyes. Let's just move this down. And I can scale this down a little bit if I want. Let's just zoom in nice and close. And then I can left click and again hold Alt and Shift to drag out a copy to the right. You can see it nicely lines that up and snaps it in place. <laughs> so we've got our characters starting to come together now. And the last thing I'm going to do is just add a vector style shadow underneath. So with the ellipse tool, we can just left click and drag. We'll make this very, very shallow. And then again, I can drag this. You can see there that pink guide, it centers it underneath. So that is perfectly central. So those smart guides are really helpful. And we can go to object, arrange, and center back. So the shadow is going to be behind the character. And I'm just going to move this up a little bit. And what I can do is select the shadow. And again, I'm just going to pick another color, double click, Select global. Ah, you can see I just applied that to the stroke there by mistake, but we can swap those around. So the fill has that gray fill that I've selected and we can just remove the stroke. So when you're working in Illustrator, just make sure that you have the fill or the stroke selected depending on what you're looking to apply the color to. And I'm just going to move this little guy up by dragging over everything, left clicking and holding shift, just so he's a little bit more central on the artboard. So we've created the character and now we just need to go and fine tune the color. And because we created all the colors as global swatches, we can open up the swatches panel, double click that red, and we can tick preview. And then as we adjust this, you can see it makes changes to the color. So we can pick any color we want. I think I'm gonna go for something like a, a pinky red. Something like this. I think is pretty cute and click OK and what it does is it updates every instance of that color so it was red before and now it's updated to kind of like a pinky red and we can do the same for the black so we've got the eyes and the mouth as the black we can tick the preview box and we can adjust the color so we'll go for a very very dark purple with a hint of red very specific and click OK and for the shadow, we can double click that global swatch, tick preview, and we'll just adjust this until we get something that we're happy with. Now this is a relatively simple character illustration. However, if you have an infinitely complex illustration, updating every part of that illustration with a new color is incredibly time consuming. So having global swatches set up at the beginning makes the process a lot quicker and easier. And there we go. That's how to create a character illustration in Adobe Illustrator. As always, guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.